Welcome back. So we're talking about the singular value decomposition, how you can take a data matrix X and write it as the product of three matrices, U, sigma, and V transpose, where essentially U contains information about the column space of X, V contains information about the row space of X, uh, and sigma is a diagonal matrix that tells you how important the various columns of U and V are. So they're hierarchically arranged so that v, U1 is more important than U2, is more important than U3, and so on and so forth. Same with V. And the importance is uh, encoded in these singular values, sigma. Notice that I've rewritten V transpose as, uh, as this matrix here. So I take the actual kind of columns of V, V1, V2, V3, and I transpose them. So now they're row vectors, V1 transpose, V2 transpose, and so on and so forth. This will be a little bit easier to understand the next part of this. Now I should mention that because this X matrix only has M columns, there are only M linearly independent uh, columns in this N-dimensional uh, vector space that could be spanned by these. And so only the first M columns of U are important in representing this data. Okay, so we'll come back to that in a minute. So what I want to show you now, there's two things. Um, the first one is going to be how we can represent this expansion as a sum of rank one matrices. And then in the next segment, I'm going to talk about how you can actually compute these and interpret them uh, as encoding correlation structures within this data matrix X. Okay, so X equals, based on the singular value decomposition, what I can think of is U times sigma, because this is a diagonal matrix, if I take U times sigma, essentially U1 gets scaled by sigma 1. It only gets multiplied by sigma 1 because every other term in this column is 0. So if I take that and multiply it, it multiplies this by sigma 1, all of the others by 0. Same with the second column. It gets uh, 0 U1 plus sigma 2 U2 plus zeros of everything else, and so on and so forth. So this essentially is, sig if I multiply this, I get sigma 1 U1, sigma 2 U2, and so on and so forth. And then similarly, if I take that matrix and I multiply it by this V transpose matrix, the first column, sigma 1 U1, only multiplies the V1 transpose column. The second column only multiplies the V2 transpose column, and so forth. And so what I end up getting is an expansion that looks like sigma 1 U1 V1 transpose, that's the first column, is this times this times this, plus sigma 2 U2 V2 transpose. And I, I encourage you to actually you know, multiply this out, this times this, and then that times this, and you'll see that you get this expansion. Sigma 1 U1 V1 plus sigma 2 U2 V2 plus dot, dot, dot. Eventually you'll get sigma M U, M, V, M transpose. And here's where it gets, uh, gets interesting. Even though this U matrix has N columns, so it's a massive N by N matrix, there are only M non-zero singular values because this thing can only have at most rank M. There's only M linearly uh, independent rows and columns of this data matrix X. And so even though I could keep writing this out, plus sigma m plus 1, um plus 1, and so on and so forth, all of those singular values are 0. So everything after the first m columns of u and v get multiplied by a 0. So I can throw all of those away. And essentially what that means is that I can select uh, just the first m columns of u, the first m by m block in sigma, and the m by m matrix V, and that equals, we're going to call this U hat, sigma hat, and I actually didn't do anything to V. It didn't change at all, V uh, transpose. Okay, so U hat and sigma hat are just the first R columns of U, M columns of U, and the first uh, M by M block of sigma, and V is the original, the original V matrix. And this is exact. X is equal to U sigma V transpose, and it's also exactly equal to U hat sigma hat V transpose, where these are just the first M columns of U and the first M by M matrix of non-zero singular values, okay? This is often called the economy SVD. 
And it's actually what you want to do in almost all cases, especially where you have tall, skinny matrices. I've been assuming the whole time for, uh, the whole time in these lectures, what I've been assuming is that N is much, much larger than M, meaning I have a lot more measurements, maybe a megapixel, million measurements in each column. I have many more, uh, many more entries in each column than I have number of columns. So maybe I have a million pixels per column, but I've only got a few hundred or a thousand people. So this would be a million, this would be a thousand. That's what I've been assuming. And in that case, you wanna run the economy SVD. So in MATLAB, uh, again, this is USV equals SVD of X, but now you give it the econ option. Okay, and what that does, is instead of returning this massive n by n u matrix with all of the complete basis, all n columns of u, what it does is it only returns the first m columns of u uh, that are corresponding to this part that have non-zero singular values. Okay, good. So you want to expand your x in terms of these rank one matrices. So I'm saying this is a rank one matrix, this is a rank one matrix, and so on and so forth. So the way you see that is as follows. So u1 is a column vector. This is sigma one times my column vector u1 times my row vector v1 transpose. This is u1, v1 transpose, plus sigma two, again, column vector u2, row vector v2 transpose plus dot 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 plus all the way up to sigma m column vector um row vector vm transpose and so you can you're probably used to computing uh vector vector products like inner products where you have a vector on its side times a tall vector something like that this is called an outer product but it's totally fine what you do this is a matrix what you do is you take the first element of u1 and you multiply the whole vector v1 by that. That's the first row. The next row is the second element of u1 times that whole row v1 transpose and so on and so forth. You just go element by element and you multiply this row by that element, this row by that element, this row by that element, and so on and so forth until you get a matrix. Now I say it's rank one because that matrix by construction has exactly one uh, linearly independent column and linearly independent row. Every row and every column of this matrix is dependent on this row and this column. So this is a rank one matrix, this is a rank one matrix, and so on and so forth. Okay, so that's another interpretation of the SVD is that what you're doing is you're decomposing X into these orthogonal bases U and V where essentially you can write this as a sum of these, um, these rank one matrices that increasingly improve the approximation of X. So if I only got one vector U and one vector V, the best rank one approximation I can possibly make to my matrix X is this one here, sigma U1 V1 transpose. If I get another column of U and column of V, I get to add this sigma U2 V2 transpose. This is the next best, uh, this is the best rank two matrix that approximates X. And the best rank three and four and five are obtained by keeping the first three or four or five columns uh, of U and V. Okay, so that's, that's what the singular value decomposition means. And again, oftentimes what we'll do is we'll truncate, we'll truncate at rank R. Okay, so oftentimes if I have a lot of really small singular values, like let's say sigma r plus one and r plus two all the way down to sigma m are really, really small, negligibly small, and most of the information of x is captured in the first r singular values and singular vectors, then what I can do is I can chop this summation off and I can throw away all of the low energy singular values and only keep the first r columns of u and r columns of v and r by r submatrix. So let's now say that this is a little r by r, uh, the first r columns, I keep a little r by r, and I keep the first uh, r rows of v transpose. That we're going to define as u tilde sigma tilde v tilde transpose. 
Okay, and here I've said that x is only approximately equal to this because this is a rank r approximation. This is the best approximation of x with of rank r in terms of r column, r linearly dependent, uh, independent rows and columns. Okay, uh, and in fact, this has been formalized in a theorem by Eckert and Young. So this is, goes way back, uh, the Eckert Young theorem. Eckert uh, Young theorem, and this is in 1936. So all of this theory goes way, way back, over 100 years for the, the singular value decomposition, almost 100 years for the Eckert-Young theorem. And what it states is that the absolute best approximation to the matrix X that has rank R, so the arg uh, min, the best, the best X tilde such that rank x tilde equals r. The best x tilde that minimizes x minus x tilde in the Frobenius norm is given by, and what arg mean min means is that whatever argument minimizes this, whatever x tilde does have the smallest error and has rank r, is the output, and that is exactly equal to u tilde, sigma tilde, v tilde transpose, okay? So the Eckert-Young theorem essentially guarantees that the best possible matrix approximation to x of rank r is given by the first r uh, truncated singular value decomposition. You take the first r columns of u, the first r columns of v, and the first little r by r subblock of sigma, and you can approximate this matrix x very accurately and efficiently in terms of, of those um, that truncated SVD. Okay, very good. Um, and we call this U tilde, sigma tilde, V tilde in the book. Now, one last thing uh, I wanna point out is that before, remember, this U and this V are actually unitary. This is an N by N matrix, this is an M by M matrix, and if I multiply U, U transpose, or U transpose U, I get the identity matrix. But here, if I, if I truncate at rank R, if I throw away some of the columns of U or V, now these are no longer square matrices. And so this is not exactly true anymore. It's still true that U tilde transpose U tilde is the R by R identity matrix, but it is not true that U tilde, U tilde transpose, this is not an identity matrix. Okay, so it was before truncation, but after truncating, U transpose U is an identity matrix, but U U transpose is not the identity matrix. And this is really, really important. Um, lots of us are guilty of forgetting this basic, basic fact and having uh, wrong proofs because we just forgot that this is true. I'm guilty of this as well. Um, U transpose, these columns are still orthogonal. So if I take U tilde transpose, looks like this. If you knock these columns over on their side, they're these kind of short fat matrix times U tilde. They're, these columns are still orthogonal. So if I dot product them like this, I still get an identity matrix. But now if I construct this quantity, U tilde, U tilde transpose, this is a big N by N square matrix of rank R, and it's definitely not equal to the identity matrix. Okay, good. So just to recap, we can take our singular value decomposition, uh, U sigma V transpose, and you can essentially rearrange these columns uh, and this product into the sum of these rank one matrices, sigma one U one V one transpose plus sigma two U two V two transpose and so on and so forth. Uh, in general, you only wanna do the economy SVD and keep the first M uh, columns of U and the first M subblock of sigma if you have tall skinny data matrix. Um, and then even further, sometimes if you have small singular values, you'll truncate some of the, the small singular values and you'll get a rank R approximation. And it's provable that this is the best rank R approximation to the matrix X uh, by the Eckert-Young theorem. Okay, so that's a lot going on here, but basically you can approximate your matrix X in terms of a lower rank approximate matrix X tilde given by a truncated singular value decomposition. Okay, thank you.